Hi, welcome to The Light of Deception. Today I'm going to continue in the series, 24 Deceptive Practices in the Church. If you haven't had a chance to see the first eight parts of the series, I will put it below for you. Now, for anybody that's new on the site, the site is covering um, topics under church and world deception from a biblical viewpoint. Today, we're going to be talking about Enneagrams. So what is an Enneagram? And we're going to let the people that teach it cover what an Enneagram is, and then we'll be right back. Here it is. I think everybody's aware how popular Enneagram is getting. You know, when I first was learning this many years ago, if somebody asked me what I did on a plane, I really didn't know what to tell them. But nowadays, a lot of people do know what this is. In Buddhism, the first they have in Buddhism what are called the Eight Noble Truths, and the first of them is right view. And it's first because if you get the orientation right, most anything you learn will be helpful, will be grist for the mill. It's not that the knowing about the personalities is irrelevant or unnecessary. It's just like standing on the front doorstep of a palace, but you haven't gone into the palace. We're going to go into the palace. We'll talk about the various ways and practices that we can use the Enneagram to come home to ourselves, to get more present. Now, the basis of that, of all real Enneagram work, has to do with what we call the centers, which are the centers of intelligence. They're the intelligence of the body or the belly, a kind of kinesthetic, visceral awareness. There is the intelligence of the heart, our emotional intelligence, our sensitivity, our kindness. And there is our cognitive intelligence, our clarity and discrimination and our capacity to come to new ideas and insights. We'll be bringing together three streams of Enneagram experience through the ages, theory and specificity and clarity, inner development or inner work and the development of character and embodiment and practices. Russ and I will be clarifying what personality and what essence really are. And what's the trajectory that we get from the suffering that causes us to misuse the three centers of intelligence, what causes us to contract from fear from our true potential. And so we'll be going through the journey of the core suffering, the shadow, the fixation, the virtues and the holy ideas and the inner lines of dynamism that lead all of us to not only be the best version of what we are and our gifts, but also to understand that we have all nine of these dimensions within us. We're so excited and filled with joy to be able to invite you to this evolutionary approach to working with the Enneagram for wholeness, integration, and awakened consciousness. It will be an honor to journey with you because we know that every human being is just filled with potential and can bring that to the world. Okay, so we're going to be talking about Enneagrams being brought into the church. I did teach on Enneagrams maybe a couple years back, and I'm going to leave the links below, and it's dealing with Bethel Church and how they're using Enneagrams personality test. Right. So this is one. This one is going to be by the same people that just taught. So it's um, called um, Awakening into Higher Consciousness by Living an Enneagram Informed Life. So we're going to be looking at that. This is going to be by Russ Hudson and Jessica Dibb. Now, what it says here is that discover or rediscover how the timeless wisdom of the Enneagram provides a personalized map towards greater wholeness and joy with today's leading edge Enneagram teachers. Does that sound like a Christian type of 
movement or a Christian type of practice about ancient wisdom? Is this talking about Gnosticism? Is this more New Age thought? Is this talking more about Eastern mysticism? What is the Enneagram about? So here we go. Here's the second part in another video for you to look at. Here it is. One question that you might have is, what is the Enneagram? And a lot of people think of it as just as some system to break people down into nine types. Well, that's an element of it. But the Enneagram actually is a lot more to it than that. There are nine points. It's on a geometric figure, a circle, which represents unity, the unity of consciousness, the unity of God, the unity of reality. It's got a triangle in it, which represents manifestation, things being here, appearing as something in the world. And then it's got this funny little hexad, which represents that everything in the world is changing and evolving and becoming something else. Okay, so we're getting a clearer picture what an Enneagram is and what it's used for. In this, on this page here, this is going to be called a sh the shift network. So let's see what this is all about. It says you probably noticed how popular the Enneagram is becoming. Yes, it is. Now remember some of the stuff I'm going to be showing you. It came out, the last video here came out in August of 2020. So it's uh, 2022. So it's just recently. So it is very popular. So it's talking a little bit about um, the origins of the Enneagram and how the modern world said that the work of the Enneagram will come into prominence at the time when it most is needed. During complex and disorientating times, many of us look for tools and practices that help us to ground and do the deep inner work of discovering who we really are and why we do what we do. So they're thinking the Enneagram is going to give this your answer instead of testing things, you know, learning about the Word of God, and the Word of God will teach you and lead you in all truths. So what is this? Is this a philosophy of man? Does this have anything to do with the Bible? Is this um, trusting man instead of trusting God? We're going to be answering these questions. It says, more and more, the Enneagram has been seen as a system to know and understand yourself. Perhaps you have a pretty good grasp on the nine personality types. However, the Enneagram is so much more than a typing system. Knowing your type is just the beginning of your investigation, and inner journey. Now here's the course under Enneagrams. Look at this. So uh, I was thinking about how to approach this with readers or listeners in this case. And I think there's just so much mystery around the Enneagram. So we can start with the basics and like work our way up. So what is the Enneagram? Well, I think it gets uh, complex for people around the fact that it is more than one thing. Um, originally, the Enneagram is a symbol, and it's, uh, it's a circle with some inner lines in it, and some people think it looks like a pentagram, but it's not a pentagram. It's, uh, in fact, there's a, there's a triangle in the middle of it. Uh, but it, that has certain esoteric meanings, the, the symbol itself. It's looking at the relationship between what things are in their fundamental nature, you might say, as consciousness. And it's looking at how things come into form and the relationship between those things. But the, uh, the part that got popular is that um, a man named Oscar Chazo studying the symbol in relation to a lot of other long-term spiritual teachings, shall we say, uh, started to see some connections and brilliantly saw uh, that there was a sensibility around each of the nine points. The Enneagram is a circle with nine points on it. And he saw that there were elements of character that had been studied for thousands of years that fit in a certain pattern around that symbol. So I think the part that most people learn about is this 
nine the nine points and how they are actually representing facets of humanity. I think sometimes people take it too far and the, the sort of popular version of the Enneagram that is also a turnoff for some people is that it's nine boxes. Which box do you go in, right? But that's not really what it ever was originally. Um, it was originally about that these nine points were gifts, capacities that human beings have, needs that human beings have, but that when we get too identified with any one of them, uh, a lot of our total humanity kind of drops out, but that we get habituated to live that way. So the idea was to become aware of that to free ourselves up again. Okay, coming back to this, I wanted to say a few more things here. I'm going to read a little bit more. It says the Enneagram is a powerful tool to dig below the surface of behaviors that shape your perceived identity and how to move through the world. The timeless wisdom of the Enneagram helps you to identify your true motivations, fixations, avoidances, and the defense mechanisms that keep you stuck. That sounds kind of like psychology a little bit. You know, it sounds definitely man-centered. Let's see what we got here. And this is why esteemed Enneagram experts Russ Hudson and Jessica Dim have created an in-depth nine model nine module foundations of the Enneagram courses. The secret to success in any course of study or endeavor is to have the right organization and a firm understanding of the fundamentals. Russ Hudson, author of The Wisdom of the Enneagram, is recognized as one of the foremost Enneagram teachers in the world. And Jessica Dib, an integrative breathwork trainer, that does not surprise me, is one of the great innovators in the Enneagram field. Okay, so this sounds a little bit more than Christian, right? A little bit more surrounded into mysticism and getting yourself tied into principles and personality types and being aware about who you are instead of praying and reading the Bible. God is very clear on who, how we were created, what are his, his purposes for his children, right? And so sober-minded, this doesn't sound sober-minded. It doesn't sound steadfast. You know, it doesn't sound like it's um, a Bible, some kind of breath work, breath prayers, breath training, hypnosis it kind of sounds a little bit like self-focused inner child discovery tri type of um, meditation breath works um, mindfulness meditations seems like it encompasses all these different things um, and it leads towards um, extra biblical type of doctrine it's not even doctrine really it's a, it's a course that has been christianized so you're going to see these enneagrams in churches today, and they're going to make a Christian twist in it. And you got to figure out where the roots are coming from so you can know how it got integrated and moved from the secular society into the churches. And why would the churches be using it? Because it's popular and it draws people in. So they bring in the world, Gnosticism, um, all this centering breath type of work, right? Mindfulness meditation. And uh, because it's so popular in the world, it's like they bring in the world to bring in the world instead of, you know, you don't let the culture manipulate the church, right? You learn about the word of God and you go out and bring the salvation message to the culture instead of bringing the culture to bring in the world because you look just like the world. So there's no difference between you know, being a steadfast, sober-minded Christian that's standing on the word of God, knowing that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through him. And being into some kind of philosophy or ancient philosophies, it can lead you to deception for sure. It can make you feel like something that you are not. You are a sober-minded Christian. We are a fallen mankind in need of a Savior. That's why the salvation message 
That's why Jesus did what he did. And he paid that ultimate cost when he was ultimately, he was holy, righteous, without spot, without blemish, perfect in every way, way, took on the body of flesh, lived a perfect life and dies as a ransom for all of us and paid the price for all of our sin and his innocence. He traded for our guilt and shame. Now, if we can reach some kind of higher self through these enneagrams, higher personality types, some kind of inner wisdom, without God, it is empty. And it's at the very worst, dark and deceptive, and at the very least, very misleading. So I would say stay far away from these enneagrams and know what you're doing before you get into these practices and test everything against the Word of God. Be a good Berean to make sure these things are so and make sure that you don't get lost in what man is calling you to do, which is to arrive at yourself instead of dying to yourself. You know, because God is on the throne, man is not, right? And the Bible is telling you all the time that you need to be, the way that we are used is to die to ourselves, and then we can be used in our fallen condition. It is amazing that God can use any of us in our fallen condition. He chooses to. So instead of arriving at the throne and taking yourself and your inner divinity, die to yourself and let Jesus lead. Because he is the one that you're supposed to be following, right? He is the way, the truth, and the life, like I said before. And you're going to trust in the Lord with all your heart and not lean on your own understanding and all your ways accept him and he will direct your path because there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end is destruction. So be so vigilant in these days. I hope this helps you. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.